Hello, Biology 230. This is Dr. Chastity Bradford. And of course, this is Unit 2. And we're still covering Chapter 7. And now we're moving on to osmosis and water balance. We're discussing the movement of water across membranes. So what is osmosis? Oftentimes you hear that people are learning by osmosis, that they're putting books on top of their head and hoping that the information just diffuses into their head. Uh, but of course, we know that does, that is not how it works. It's not how learning works. Sometimes we wish it does work that way. But osmosis really is the diffusion of free water across a selectively permeable membrane. And we've already discussed what selective permeability is. So osmosis is the diffusion of free water across a selectively permeable membrane. So osmosis is really about water movement. Now, water diffuses across a membrane from the region of lower solute concentration to the region of higher solute concentration. So let's look at this in motion, okay? So what you see here is a beaker and it has a membrane in the middle, of course, and um, this membrane will allow small molecules such as oxygen and carbon dioxide to cross it, okay? Um, but polar molecules like sugars and proteins, they can't freely cross this membrane. Now, what you see here are the water molecules, and of course, water is polar. And these molecules, in this example, this membrane is permeable to the water molecules, and they're, so they're small enough to pass through this membrane. Now, what you see here is in green is urea. Now, urea is added to this right side here of this membrane. And these molecules, they're polar, but they're large. And these polar molecules, urea molecules, are um, binding to the water molecules. They're attracted to the water molecules. And so now what you have is a higher concentration of free water here on the left side versus um, bound water on the right side. So water begins to move down its concentration gradient and you notice that as water moves down its concentration gradient, okay, you're going to see an arrow pretty soon. So now you have more free water here and it's moving down its concentration gradient and notice the levels of water changing. So now on the right side, the water level is increasing because water is moving down its concentration gradient from an area of high free water to an area of low free water. Okay, And then eventually, um, as shown here, the concentrations of the two solutions become equal. Okay. Now, let's play this again. Let's replay this so that you can see exactly what happened. Okay, so again, diffusion is a net, usually um, you've learned that diffusion is the net movement of molecules down their concentration gradient, okay? And of course, small things like oxygen and carbon dioxide can cross. Now, what you're seeing here are polar molecules like sugars and proteins. They're uh, too big to cross this membrane. Now, this membrane is permeable to water, so you see, and water is polar, so they can freely move. Okay, so osmosis, the movement of water from an area of um, high concentration to an area of low. So now we have urea. It will not cross this membrane. And so what you see, it's polar. And so now you'll start to see the water molecules interacting with these polar urea molecules. Okay, so now you have water bound to urea here. So there's a greater concentration of free water on this left side. And that's going to drive the movement of water from an area of high free water to low free water. And you notice that the water starts to level starts to rise on the right, okay? Because more water was moving over, more water molecules are moving to the right side. And if the osmotic concentrations of these two are equal, then the solutions are isotonic, no net movement of water. However, if the solutions have unequal osmotic concentrations and the solution on the right side has a higher concentration of solute, it's hypertonic to the solution that's over here. It's hypotonic, okay? And as you see here, water will move 
towards the area of higher solute concentration. And when that happens again, that water level rises. Okay? So this is how osmosis works. Now, let's go back and let's look at it again. Okay, so this is, uh, in, in this experiment, you say this is like, this is our YouTube, and in the middle of this, this is a, sim, a selectively permeable membrane, and there's a zoom in um, highlighted section here of this selectively permeable membrane, and it's semi-permeable, permeable to water, okay? And what has happened is there's water here, of course, on both sides, now, there is a lower concentration of solute on the left side and a higher concentration of solute on the right. And in this instance, it's sugar shown in the green, with the green dots. Now, over time, what will happen? Okay, water begins to bind to the solute. You see that? And on the left side, there was sugar there. So you see the water molecules are binding, but there's a higher concentration or a hypertonic solution on the right. Okay? So there's it begins to have a cluster. There's a cluster of water molecules around the solute that binds up the water. So osmosis is the movement of free water. So where will the water flow? Okay? So you're always going from an area of high free water to an area of low free water. So it moves to the right towards the hypertonic solution as well. And so what you see here, that over time, the right side will increase. Water level will increase compared to this left side over time. Okay, Because the water molecules are moving from an area of high free water to low free water. How do cells truly behave in solution? Now, that was an experiment, okay? And you should understand how that works, but how does it work in our cells, in animal cells? Now, we do not have walls, right? So how does this osmosis work? How does this water balance work in cells that do not have walls? Tonicity, tone, tonicity is the ability of a surrounding solution to cause a cell to gain or lose water relative to the inside of the cell. What does that mean? So for example, an isotonic solution, iso, there's no net water movement. So if the solute concentration on the outside of this, let's say it's a red blood cell, is the same as the solute concentration on the inside of the cell, then there will be no net movement of water across this plasma membrane, okay? And this occurs in an isotonic solution where there's cells that does not have a cell wall. Now, let's continue to discuss water balance of cells without walls in another instance. instance. So again, tonicity is the ability of a surrounding solution, so the so solution surrounding the cell, to dictate whether or not this cell will lose or gain water. So if a red blood cell, an animal in an animal, is placed in a hypertonic solution, so in a hypertonic solution, there's a greater solute concentration out here in this blue compared to that inside the cell. Now, what will happen? The cell is going to lose water. Water is going to flow towards the area of higher solute concentration. And when that happens, the cell will shrivel. Now, if this same cell is put into a sol hypotonic solution, a hypotonic solution, where the solute concentration is less than that inside the cell. So, the solute concentration is now higher inside the cell than outside the cell. The water then will move inside the cell. And if this consistently happens over time, the cell will gain water and it can eventually burst. Okay? 
you must understand how you must understand tonicity and how water moves in and out the cell and that that is dictated by the surrounding solution compared to the inside of the cell. Now let's look at water balance with cells with walls. So cell walls help maintain water balance. Remember plant cells have cell walls. That's one of the differences between animal and plant cells. Now if a plant cell is placed into a hypotonic solution, so re remember this means that the inside of the plant cell is hypertonic compared to the hypotonic solution. It's more solute inside the cell. If there's more solute inside the cell than out, what will happen? Well, the, the cell will swell, but there is a wall here. Remember, the plant cells, they have a wall here, cell wall. So the cell will swell, but because they have a, a cell wall, the wall is going to oppose the uptake of water and the cell is now firm and turgid. Okay. Now, if this plant cell is placed into um, an isotonic solution, again, there's no net movement of water into the cell, the cell becomes limp and it may eventually just wilt, as you can see here. Okay, so if it's placed into an isotonic solution, there will be no net movement of water. And if there's no movement of water inside the cell, the cell becomes flaccid or limp. It may wilt. Now, if the cell, the plant cell, is placed into a hypertonic solution, so greater amount of solute in the solution compared to the inside of the cell, water will leave. Plant cell loses water and eventually the membrane will pull away from the wall. And this is lethal to a plant cell and it's called plasmolysis. Okay. So you must understand the difference in osmosis in animal cells versus plant cells. And this is that comparison. So when an animal cell is placed into a hypotonic solution, Water moves into the cell, and over time, this cell will lyse. If a plant cell is put into a hypotonic solution, it has a cell wall. Water moves into the cell, the plant cell, but because it has a cell wall, it becomes turgid. The cell wall opposes this force, and it becomes turgid. If an animal cell is placed into an isotonic solution, there is no net movement of water inside the cell or outside of the cell. No net movement of water moving in or no net movement of water out, leaving the cell. So it's normal. Okay? So this cell is just in this normal shape, normal size, normal function. Now if the same thing happens to a plant cell, so a plant cell placed into an isotonic solution, there is no net movement of water in or out of the cell. So there's no net movement of water in the cell. The plant cell becomes flaccid or it will wilt. Okay. Now if an animal cell is placed into a hypertonic solution, so there's more higher solute in this solution, water moves out of the cell and this animal cell will eventually shrivel. If a plant cell is placed into a hypertonic solution compared to the inside of the plant cell, this plant cell will lose water. The cell wall is not going to do anything to protect the cell. The cell membrane will eventually detach itself and the cell will have and this effect is called plasmolysis, and it is lethal to plant cells. So please understand these concepts as you learn about osmosis and the movement of water. Now, 
Osmoregulation is another important concept. It's basically what we've been talking about. How cells regulate water. How they control water balance. Now, and it's very important for living organisms that do not have walls. So for example, a paramecium that is hypertonic, let's say the inside of this cell is hypertonic, this organism is hypertonic to the pond water environment that it's in, hypertonic. So water is going to rush in. Water wants to rush into this paramecium. Now, what does this paramecium do? What does it have that allows it to adapt to its environment? It has a contractile vacuole. And remember, we discussed vacuoles. It has a contractile vacuole that acts as a pump to remove the water 